Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. I know a guy that you're close to, Ricky, right? He just recently had a fight where he's supposed to have a fight. Were you with him during that week? Oh, man. So I was actually stripping out of my warm-up clothes and into my fight kit when we got the news that Rosas wasn't going to fight. It was about five minutes before the walkout. And they had, uh, they had told us they, they weren't going to make a really big um, scene about it because they didn't want the Mexican crowd to freak out and riot, which honestly kind of makes sense. They were a great crowd. But, like, that brawl had just happened. And, in, in, and I was telling Ricky, and now Ricky's cooler than me, but I told him, I was like, when something like that is so out of your hands, you just got to, like, go with it and, and see, what, see what happens next. And, man, they tried to run it back the next week at 145, and Ricky accepted everything. And they had got our plane tickets, and then like five minutes later, we heard Rosas wasn't going to fight again. So, so I mean, that was it. That was kind of like the nail in the coffin. Very unfortunate for uh, for Ricky, though. You know, now, he was there for a month. I mean, he was there in for in Mexico for a month at an Airbnb. Man. We had like guys from my gym fly out and train with him for a couple weeks at a time. It was a lot. It was a commitment for sure. Do you think they're going to put that fight back together, or? Is it just? I don't know. I hope so. And I thought Ricky had a great style to really make it tough. Like we expected, like a pretty tough first round. But then Ricky's Ricky's just pacing goes up as the fight goes on. Ricky doesn't really get out grappled, and uh, I think like Ricky's strengths were stronger than Rosas' strengths. I hope I hope they run it back, but I I don't think they will. There's so many guys on the roster. I've learned if like fights don't happen a couple of times, it probably won't happen, and that's all right. Yeah. Also, you have other fighters. That you know, I think a lot of people don't know that you have your own team, and yeah. you have fighters yeah. competing all the time, right? How has it been growing that? Uh, it, dude, it's it's been a long it's been a long road for sure. So like Matt Wald's my striking coach, and then Ricky's with us too, and uh, we've been doing this together for like almost twenty years since we were all teenagers, and now I'm like coming up in my mid thirties. But uh, so like a- April's a good example. Like I fight on the sixth, and then the next week we have IBJJF Houston, and then the next week we have uh, a pro guy fighting for Fury. And the next week we have Sub Hunter Pro and grappling games. Like every single week in April, we have guys competing. Two out of the four weeks in March, we got people competing. Like some amateur MMA, some amateur kickboxing, a lot of jujitsu. Dude, so we've been at it forever. We finally now have like a pretty good crop of pros. Like I got two of Miami's. One went six and one, and one went six and zero. Oh, and they both won. They both won championships. They're both going pro here pretty soon. So I mean, we're gonna be even busier, which is awesome. That's that's how we've always been. Yeah, man, I could see you like in the next, I don't even know, 10 or 15 years becoming like one of the top coaches. I could see it in you, man. I think that's part of your, your life. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It's a lot of traveling, but I mean, if it's catching UFC dubs for my guys, then I'll do whatever, you know. And also, you've been a black belt for nine years? Yeah, yeah. I got my third degree in, uh, in January. Man, that's a that's a responsibility. I, I look at it as a responsibility to be a black belt for nine years. That's a long time, man. Yeah, I've been a black belt longer than I've not been a black belt in jujitsu. It's <laughs> awesome, man. My black belt, I wish I had it with me. It's at the gym, but it is like old and, and raggedy. Not been washed once. Nah, it's been washed a couple times by mistake. But no, nah, dude, I, I love I love running my Gracie Baja gym. Dude, I did I did I grapple every single day. It's fun. The, the guy that gave you this the stripe. Dracolino, that's Dracolino. I'm actually going to his gym tomorrow. It's about an hour south of my gym. They they built this fortress, this like mega facility. It's huge, which is good because he got more students than me. A small gym, and uh, they finally moved into a spot like worthy of all those jujitsu world champions. Nice, nice, man. It's great, great to see, man. Just you know, it's meshing the martial arts world with the fight world. I feel like kind of there are similarities, but there's some separation there, right? Oh, 100 percent. That's one thing I love about my gym. Like we still wear the gis. It's nothing too trivial. But like we'll like bow on and off the mats. Like that's cool. Um, yeah, there are some aspects of martial arts that are just they're just fun. Like you know, helps with the respect and the discipline and just kind of the old school style, which is which is pretty cool. And uh, let's turn the attention to your upcoming fight, um, April sixth. Court McGee, man, they they love putting you against these uh. These vets, you know what I mean? And, and no, you love signing the contract, huh? <laughs> yeah, I can't be more excited, too. Like, seriously, I like getting the vets. Somebody had released a list recently. It was, like, Poye and Gaethje and Volk. It was all these dudes, you know, around, around like, my age, 34, 35, 36. And they're like, enjoy these dudes while they're here because they're not going to be around forever. And, like, dude, I love fighting the vets while they're around. 
you know, I'm a vet now. This is my 20th fight in the UFC coming up, which is crazy. It's been cool, man. It's been a, a fun almost decade. Well, it's a milestone for you, right? Because I think, like, not too long ago, you were saying, I just need to get to 20 fights in the UFC, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, I recalibrated that, girl. I want, I want 20 <laughs> So I got 12 wins in the UFC right now. So 20 wins is the new 20 goal. Wins. If they get 20, wins, I'll set a new goal or retire. Yeah. And Court McGee, man, what do you what are your thoughts on him and, and the skill set that he has? Dude, he's fought everybody. He goes the distance all the time. So like I know he's gonna be tough and have good cardio. I I guarantee you he's gonna be probably like the most like physical guy I've ever fought, like in the clinch. Like every fight, punch him as hard as I can in the head with as good as technique as I can. I mean, same stuff. Especially, it was cool. It was cool. So, like, with the Buckley fight, I had kind of a flat night. And, like, I, I was like, going to make sure not to brawl with them. But, like, I didn't, I didn't like, fight like I like to fight. And Eddie Alvarez actually came by the gym. He was just in town. He needed someone to hold mitts. He hit up my mitt holder. And I was talking to him. And he was like, you know, go back to your roots. He was like, you know, fight, you know, the way you want to be perceived as a fighter. And, dude, it inspired me to just go back to, to nuking bombs and, and just and just nuking them, man. So I'm ready to go bang it out. I mean, granted, that plan wouldn't change anyway. I just got to be a little more patient on this one, make sure I don't get over my skis and get, you know, give up a takedown. Do you, do you think it was it was uh, in the performance against Buckley? It was the, the indecisiveness. Do you feel like that kind of hurt you? So yeah. So uh, <clears throat> anytime I have a fight and I don't have a performance that I like, I really try to analyze what could I have done better. Like where did I make the mistakes? And even when I got the matchup, I wasn't like super excited about it. It was at the apex and I'd fought in a few crowds. So I even told my striking coach, I was like, hey, let's make this one routine. Like I'm going to do camp, slide in and slide out. And then like fight week, I wasn't all hyped up. Even like in the warm up was like a little flat. And then even making the walk, like I realized the main reason I do the fights is for like the experience. The walk to the octagon and the fight is like why I do it. And like even the walk was like routine. I didn't get all hyped up. And I just felt kind of flat and kind of slow in that fight. It like was there and over before I realized I didn't get that like crazy rush that I do this for. It was just like a, the wrong mindset. And I just, I think I tried to be like really calm and cool and collected and like try to be more technical, but like output was low. I just didn't get pumped, didn't get excited. So I'm going to make sure I call it a rageometer. My rageometer is going to be cranked up to 12 on this next fight. It's the, the, I guess momentum. Like, you have to build momentum before you even enter the octagon? Is that something? Um, it's just, like, I've always been, like, a killer be killed fight to the death. And I get it in my head, and I get, like, really excited. I'm like, all right, if I don't win this fight, I'm not coming home. Like, I'm on, like, a Viking ship sailing to foreign lands to go, you know, raid a village. And if we beat them, then we live. And if we don't beat them, then we die. Like, that's just the mindset. Now, granted, nobody dies. It's nice. But the mindset does help. And, uh, and man, it's just such a rush. It really is such an awesome feeling. It's hard to replicate too, but uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to just like experience all the emotions as much as I can for the next fight. Yeah, speaking with fighters, you know, like even off interviews and talking about things that usually fighters don't talk about during the interviews, you know what I mean? There's, a di there's different conversations you have and, you know, talking about like finding the spark again, um, you know, like the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, but the highs are great, but the lows is like, that's what makes you a fighter is when you're digging yourself out of the lows. Yeah. And, and that shows that if you got it or not, right? Oh, hundred percent. And I've never been deterred by, by any, any losses, but like, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to go fight again. Like I, I feel like, uh, like I'm well, not a rebirth cause I didn't really need it. Cause I was, you know, I, I was as prepared as I could have been for that last fight. I just, I just altered my mindset. Like I dialed my rageometer down, you know, not knowing I didn't need to, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's an old Texas adage. And uh, that's very true. So I'm happy to, crank it back up to maximum and go throw some heat in the octagon man that's what i'm what i'm here to do there you go and are you still just like traveling for camps as well of course for this and are you going to war as well like are you yeah. making that I do all my training in houston um and like the later half of the week and then war or i'm sorry and then a fortis early on so i get my hard sparring work for this it's cool because ramez brahima just got his fight booked yeah. I can't pronounce the name of the opponent. I've looked, I've watched tape and I just, it's Therimbolo, Garumbola or something, man. I don't know. I Garimba. Yeah. Garimbo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, nice dude. I just can't, I, I, I yeah. gotta, gotta pronounce his name, but uh, yeah. So we've been getting a lot of really good rounds in together, man. It's been fun. 
And then they got all those wrestlers. Jacoby Smith, is, I've been getting rounds with him and all that. And he's 8-0 now. He's coming off a crazy 13-second KO. He'll probably be in Contender Series yeah. next year. But it's always great training up at Fortis. And then in Houston, man, I have my gym. I'm there with Ricky and my boys all the time. And then I have all the guys at war. And dude, even it was cool. Brian Battle was in town last week. We got some rounds in together. He's fighting uh, tomorrow. Comain, it was cool. Man. I'll be rooting for him. So, uh, yeah, man, the work's been great. The work's been great. I actually have more training session opportunities than I have calories for in a day. It's a good problem to have. But, like, if I had more, I'd train and spar more. But I can't. I'm not. Yeah, most fighters are complaining about, like, I'm not having enough of the partners that I need. But, you know, you're good to go. Um, hey, it's great to see Ramiz, man, back. It's been out for a while, man. Yeah, yeah, man. He had a he had a weird injury. It was sad. It was sad to see him dealing with what he had to deal with. But man, he's he's back and feeling freaking stronger than ever. So I'm excited to see him back in camp and soon to be back in the octagon. Man, he's been through it. Like, remember when he had the eye thing and like the, for a contender series and he had to get yeah. that fixed. Like, he's been through some some injuries. So yeah, anyone watching, uh, when we when we fight, we have to go through all these medical processes, MRIs and, and blood work and this and that. And I used to complain about it so much, but honestly, after Ramez got his thing found out and they got it fixed and he's fighting, I stopped complaining and I'm like grateful that we actually have to get cleared because if there's anything, else, they'll find it. So it was a really good perspective, you know, making the most out of a bad situation. For sure. And, you know, going back to court, you know, I mean, if you look at his last two performances, right, he does go to the decision a lot, tough dude, but he's been finished in his last two fights. Do you see anything in there? You know, you don't have to reveal anything, but do you see some, like, tendencies that people have caught on to probably? I mean, kind of, not really. He fought two really heavy hitters in, uh, in Wells and Matt Brown. Um, you know, not necessarily, but it was cool. He was cool, you know, going back and watching the tape and really looking through his record. He's got so many fights. He's got – he's fought a lot of really good dudes. And it's interesting how uh, how his fights play out. You know, he'll stand and crack a bit. He'll clinch up a lot. He'll wrestle a lot. But he's kind of a jack of all trades, man. It'll be a fun fight. I met him. We both fought. When he fought Matt Brown, I fought Tim Means in uh, in North Carolina. So I met him for the first time. He was a cool dude. But, uh, but yeah, man, that's another fun one, man. I like. I really like fighting, like, the UFC mainstays, the, the vets. That's cool. As a martial artist, like, that's that's my number one thing that I like the most in the UFC is fighting the vets. Well, it looks like you probably end up fighting Matt Brown soon. <laughs> you know, I think that's what's <laughs> He's about it, man. I would love that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, man, what are your expectations in this one? I, you know, Court McGee is tough. You know, you, you've echoed that. Um, but I think, like, this is a good opportunity for you to fight a veteran that has a pretty good name and have one of those, like, performances, you know, those, those performances that you usually have against bigger names. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny. I think I've given this answer for every singer interview I've ever done. But, <laughs> but yeah, the plan is to knock them out. You know, KOs are gold, subs are silvers, decisions are bronze. But I'm just looking to, you know, get on that podium and get my hand raised. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, knock them out. It's always the plan. I know you like a, a guillotine as well. You know what I mean? Did you, Dustin Poirier, man, his quarters telling him, don't jump for the gilly. And he's just like, fuck that. I wish. So I had a, I had a, some people over my house for that. I wish I would have been filming our reaction every time he wrapped a front headlock and jumped the ghillie. We cheered so hard. And then in the second round, he did it. And then he got mounted and then his back taken. But then he stood up and knocked him out. Dude, yeah. that's the hardest we've ever cheered as a team for a fighter. Man, Poy is the man. That was so much fun. And then even in his interview afterwards, uh, he was like, I regret nothing. You, you miss all the ghillies. You don't jump. And, like, I'm notorious for jumping on ghillies, too. So, but no, for, for this fight, I'm not, I don't know. I don't think I'll be jumping ghillies. I'm looking to keep some range and pummel for underhooks and, you know, really play a strong clinch game on the cage and stuff. So, yeah. There's certain fighters, I think, or certain matchups that you could jump for the ghillie continuously. And you have confidence enough to where if I do land on my back, I'm going to be able to get back up. I think Dustin knew that in this matchup. I agree. You know, like, yeah. The Habib was, one, you know, you don't jump for the ghillie against Habib, right? Like, you don't yeah. give him the play, you know? So what's wild is um, when he fought Habib, he had that super tight guillotine. Yeah. And, like, it looks like at first he didn't think he was going to get it, but then he realized how deep it was. But it was almost, like, too late to make the adjustments. Or, like, what I'll do is, like, hard commit to closed guard. Like, if you're going to go for a guillotine, doing it in an open guard is too hard because they can spin. It's like you got a hard commit to closed guard. And, uh, and it's funny, actually, watching his fight against Habib inspired me to make my guillotines a little higher quality 
And honestly, man, I've ran with that ever since. That was years ago. If you got a clean guillotine, like jump for it. If you if you know, if you know you got it, or if it's close, you, you got to take the risk, right? Oh yeah, dude. You, you man, you're preaching the choir, man. I I've taught yeah. the guillotines this week. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, now, last question, man, about the division. Right now, it seems like uh, they don't know who to put in for the title fight, and Islam is talking about going up and fighting. You know, Leon Edwards. What do you think of that possibility? Um, that would be cool, man. There's so many good 55ers and there's so much unsettled business at welterweight. I mean, that'd be a fun fight to watch, but, uh, but I'd rather see the champs defend their belt in the respective weight class. And, uh, and you know, there's a lot of fun guys to fight for the belt at 170, but like let Bilal Muhammad have his chance. He won so many fights. Just let him go fight Leon. Yeah. I think there'd be a it quick like the, book. Yeah. It seems like the fighters are back in Bilal, man. It seems like he's just like. I don't know. How, why? Why are they doing it to him like that? I don't know, man. And, like, he's not – I mean, everyone makes jokes about him winning decisions and being boring. He's not, I mean, he's not that boring. I don't think he's boring. He knocked out Sean Brady. Yeah. It was just – it's just fun. It's just, it's just wild how the MMA community goes. I'll tell you, you know, who, who I uh, would love to fight, you know, if this is in the cards in the future, but made a fan out of me was Michael Vanham Page. I didn't like him. He was in Bellator. And I was really rooting for Kevin Holland, you know, representing America and UFC. But that was a fun fight, man. It really was. It was that was a super fun fight to watch on both guys' ends, man. I'm looking forward to watching them fight again. Hall looked like he kind of got frustrated though, because it was so awkward, and he probably doesn't have anybody in the gym that can really imitate the style of MVP. Yeah, I don't blame him for being frustrated. Like that's like fighting Wonder Boy. Like, but Wonder Boy won't gloat and taunt you. Like, imagine yeah. like being frustrated with the style, but then being frustrated, like, personally. And, uh, and man, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. And it was, you know, it was crazy because that fight was one and one going into three. But, I mean, that's just a, that's a crazy style. You got to car crash that style. You got you to gotta time collisions and hope you take less damage than whatever you're colliding into. But, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy style. Yeah, Douglas Lima, when he locked, knocked out MVP, he was prepared, man. He, he kind of was ready to time that when he jumped in and hit the calf kick. It was almost perfect. Like yeah. Everything was perfect. Even the, even the follow-up punch that just clipped him on yeah. the jaw perfectly. Yeah, I know. That was crazy. Yeah, beautiful, man. Hey, we're going to see some violence, man. April 6th. That's Las right. Vegas. Like always. Yeah, Alex, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. I'm pretty sure you're going to fight a couple more times this year. And that's, that's also the play, man. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs>